Good morning. It's a new guy here. <laughs> uh, I have different hats. Um, in 2002, I was fumbling around. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I designed a world famous Metro. I designed so many things. Um, and, you know, I couldn't find out. Uh, my life needed to change uh, dramatically in a direction. And when I was talking to people, I was really fed up with every time meeting designers who was talking about their new project, you know, and it was always, you know, some tangible stuff that I couldn't relate to, you know. Was it beautiful? Maybe it was, I don't know. Um, then I met uh, two ladies, uh, one of them was Kiki Bill, and um, she said to me, oh, uh, I just got this commission from the government to make uh, the Oscars for design. And I said, yeah, would you like to join us? And I said, no way. And then she said, why? Because I hate these design prices, you know. It's about, you, you know, you can buy a Red Dot Award. That's the simple thing, you know. You just have to put a, some envelopes and buy some things and then you get the sticker. So this, you know, who cares? Maybe the manufacturer does. Maybe in some markets it's very good to have the if price or all these prices. But I said, no, no, I don't want to go into anything which is so stupid. She said, oh, but this is, this is totally different. And I said, aha, now you're talking. And then she explained this idea about to have a price about awarding design that improves people's life. And I said, this is the best thing I ever heard. So that changed my life. I went into Index uh, as a board member, as a jury, uh, in a, a jury chairman for a couple of years, and now I'm in the board and I'm in the jury. Um, and now it's time for me to you know, pull out of it because they can do it on their own, they don't need me, I'm just an old man, you know, getting conservative. But that's, that's the story how I got into Index. And the first time in my life I found an organization without any rules, everything was totally chaos, and they just pulled it off time after time. And I said, this is amazing, you know, a bunch of young people, about five to eight people, doing one of the best design prizes and, and putting on an agenda that we really need. So it's established as an NPO in 2002. Um, it's a, you know, have an anniversary this year, and it's a part of what we call Danish Design 2.0. And you know, in a couple of years we'll move into 3.0, and then it's worldwide because what we found out was, you know, some, you know, we were so tired of that the Danes always had the answer to any question. Because, I mean, we're so happy, we're so well off, so, you know, we know better than anyone else. And, and we said, no, no, there's something about culture. Why is it every time we design something for Africa or Asia, it fails? And maybe it's because we don't really have the interest in how they are living in Asia. You know, so we said, you know, we, this, this design has to improve people's life where they're living. It's not about having a really nice chair or a nice whatever. No, it, it has to improve their life. And then we said we have to focus on the developed and the developing countries. So it's not just for the third world, it's for everyone. And the next thing was that, you know, this is all about me and it's not very interesting. Um, so what did we say? We, we, we do it every second year. Then we have two years to find out what's going on in the world and then we can give the price. And it's the world's largest monetary design award. It's a 500,000 euros. It's quite a lot of money and it's all sponsored by the Danish government. Um, then we give it out in five categories, so I'll come back to that. And then we have the People's Choice Award. Because, you know, in the jury we sit there, have long debates about everything. And then we say, maybe we should listen to the people. And they always choose another one that we do. And I think that's really cool. So there's actually six prizes. Um, <clears throat> so what we did was we said, okay, we have these, we don't want to have a category for industrial design and one for graphic design because then it's the usual suspects who will go in and get the graphics and, you know, do they graphics in Kenya? I don't know. So, you know, so why put this stupid thing in, you know? So we just said, no, we have some designs that's for the body, some designs which is for your home, and some designs is your work, and then you have play and you have community. Then you can put, you know, you can just go in and say, I would like to put my project into Buddy. And we also made it so open, so if the jury thinks that your project was, was coming into Buddy, but we actually think, you know, it's, it's so fantastic, so it's actually more community thing, then we just move it. So we have all this freedom to do things like that. So award winners in 2005, and by luck, the first winner was Danish. I mean, 
it's, it's, very, it's very hard for political people to give up 500,000 Danish kroner to foreigners. So we were so lucky the first one was actually Danish, you know, there was, we didn't know they were Danes, but uh, it's called live straw and it's just a straw you put into water and then you suck water up and it will clean the water. It's now heavily used by the UN. The next one was a soft wall, it was a totally new wall that you can, a collapsible wall in paper. And then we had uh, a whole internet thing about uh, artisans in South uh, America. What we realized was that we were uh, two years ahead of uh, community-based internet things. So people didn't, underst they didn't just understand that project. And then we have uh, iTunes. iTunes came up. It was a fantastic thing before you were a little bit criminal because you were downloading stuff that you were not supposed to download. So when iTunes came, then you, know, you actually had an opportunity to buy your uh, music. And then we had this architecture for humanity which was absolutely unknown at the time. Now they're one of the biggest aid organizations worldwide. And it, I was so happy when the problem in Tahiti uh, with the hurricane and everything, uh, Architect for Humanity was in 10 hours after, under the radar, because they don't work with the UN, they work on their own. And it's all you know, people who voluntarily go into these things. So the fantastic pro project. And they have uh, new houses, open source and everything. So, um, that was the first one. Then the next thing, uh, next time was uh, mobility. It was a prosthesis uh, that was actually made for seven dollars compared to the one you can buy for UN, which is a fifteen hundred dollar one. And then we have a solar bottle. The whole idea was that if you put water in bottles and put them on your roof in Africa, then the, the sun rays will clean your water. And we were doing a lot of work afterwards with Coca-Cola to see if we could change the plastic bottles of Coca-Cola so they're actually, they're, when they label it with Coca-Cola, if they could put a mirror on the inside. And Coca-Cola didn't, you know, that was before CSR. So they didn't get it. And they said, why? Because the problem with that water bottle is they will never go to Africa. It's too expensive. So if we could, if we'd done the deal with either Pepsi or Coca-Cola, we knew that the water bottle will end up in Africa. Then we had a thing called tongue sucker. It was after the uh, terror bombings in London. It's a very smart thing you put on your tongue so your tongue don't fall back when you're unconscious. Um, so it's the first time that something is added to the first aid gear. And then we have one laptop per child. And this is the people's prize. This was um, a boat refugee from uh, Vietnam and she actually uh, was living in a refugee camp and she saw the problem with needles, that people used the same needles again and again and then you had all the infections. So she came to Denmark and she entered a design school and her thesis was actually this yellow cap you put on a, on a Coke can and then you break your needle and it will be in the Coke can and can't get out. So very smart, very cheap and it's now in the UN program. So 2009 we had a, a facial heart monitor made in South Africa and the whole thing that is you can drop it from a plane it's still working and then we had this uh, cooking uh, thing from India and Denmark that you know in Denmark they say well, how can you give a price it's so ugly <laughs> and I said what do you mean by ugly they said oh it's it's it's, it's made out of uh, you know clay and it's it's you know it's funny colors and everything and I said oh 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 this is in India. I think probably they're very proud of it. They think it's really cool design in India. So what's the problem? If, of course we can make a Danish version with a stainless steel and you know sharp edges and all that. But that's not the idea with this project is that it's actually the fumes, the smoke from all these uh, kitchens that kills people. So this is a way, and it's done by Philips, and it's an open source system that will um, people will actually survive. Then we had microfinancing. We had a pick book. It was a, a fantastic Dutch designer who actually took a pick and just sat down and found out what do we use a pick for. And if you can find the book, you know, you're amazed. It's in bubblegum. It's in uh, bullets. There's picks in everything. And, you know, she just documented the whole thing. And then we had EV uh, infrastructure. It's a better place. You know, how can we actually have electrical cars? And then we had a sleeping bag for homeless that won the prize for the best people's choice. Last year, it was free eyeglasses, a program done by Fuse Project in the States uh, for uh, kids in Mexico. They found out that all the, all the kids that was not very good at school, the problem was they didn't have, you know, they couldn't see. So they were put in the back of the classroom. All the stupid ones go to the back of the classroom. 
And the problem was that when they got to the back of the classroom, they couldn't see the board, so they didn't get anything out of it. Then they provided them with, with free uh, glasses, and they can get them in really funky colors. So from actually being, you know, bullied because you had uh, eyewear, now it was really hip to have eyewear because you get them in for smart colors. And then we had social housing. I'll come back to that project later. And <clears throat> then we had a thing called Design for Change uh, uh, from India. Um, and then we have the airbag helmet in Denmark. You know, we bike a lot so, and you need to have a helmet on, but you look like an idiot. Um, so uh, they made a come back to that one too. And then we have an infant warmer who won the uh, best program for you know, the public. And then we have Seoul got a prize for Design Seoul. It was the first time we saw a city who actually made a political plan for how to move forward with the city. It was Mayor O. Oh, um, he resigned and then the plan was dropped because the next one who took over didn't understand what was going on, but it's a fantastic plan. So what we're saying is that we are really good in Denmark in designing teacups, chairs, everything that is mass produced. And if we just ask the designers worldwide, don't design any teacups for five, ten years maybe, you know, just don't do it. Do something else that has a meaning, and when we solve all the big challenges we have in the world, then we can design new teacups and new chairs and lovable design, because of course we need things that we like, who is nice to touch, and uh, I mean, I have this Philips Stark lemon squeezer. It's standing on my table. I never use it, because if you try to use it, you will never get the juice out of it, right? It's uh, absolutely rubbish, and you can buy it in platinum and in gold and everything. It, it, it looks nice, and then in my drawer, I have this little smart thing, you know which doing the job. So can we just do some designs that's actually social, that will connect people, that will make people have a better life. So what we're doing is it's human, it has to, it's business, and it's really business, it's not aid, it's trade, um, it's a social responsibility, how is it produced, how is it actually fitting in, and then what is the technical feasibilities, because you know, we can do something in Taiwan and Copenhagen, but they can't do it in the middle of Africa or in the middle of the Amazons. So what we do is we have something we could call inspire, engage, and educate. So this is the triangle we're working with people in. And that's why we're so interested in actually coming to um, Taipei, because I think you know, we can actually do this for Taipei to open the eyes of the normal people living in Taipei, because I believe they all have an interest in how their future will be. Uh, now it's back in Copenhagen because we are giving the prizes out in late uh, August, so we'll have a new exhibition touring. <clears throat> and then we have this educational program. We found out that you know, we can educate designers, that takes a long time. Uh, we can educate politicians, but the ones we really should uh, educate is the kids. Kids are so open, and if we can teach them about how to think in a design way, then they can maybe solve some of the schoolwork in that way, and they can also come up with ideas that is a lot better than adults. So now we are running, we are running school projects, we are teaching teachers, so the teacher can teach the teacher. Uh, I think we have about 500 kids who are now got us into design to improve life thinking. And we are, if you go to the website, uh, this is a Danish one, I couldn't find the English one uh, because um, I just couldn't get to the internet last night. But this is, so what you do is you start up, prepare, and then we're working on the form, impact, and content. You know, what, so it's not about starting to do the form, so it's just design thinking, and then you have, try to understand your problem. Go ask people, why don't you bike on a city bike longer than 30 minutes? Is it just about money? Maybe it's not. And then you can actually give it some form, and then you actually finish the whole project. And all these iterative processes, we're teaching kids to do that. And they can actually use it in their homework for the school when they have an you know, assignment and work like that. Okay? Oh, that's me running again. And then we, then we try to, to inspire. So we work with the Singaporean government. We called, this is Mr. Lee Bong, we called him our minister because he was more in favor of index than the Danish minister was. Because, you know, it seems that Singapore at that time was, uh, you know, way ahead of everybody else in this. So he got it. And then uh, we invited him to Copenhagen to teach the Danish minister that actually 
that in Denmark they had this organization who was quite cool. So now we're doing, you know, uh, we worked a lot with Singapore, we worked a lot with Hong Kong, Helsinki, and we're trying to sort of spread it all around, and we are trying to see if we can, you know, get it to Taipei to open up, you know, a discussion here, and we're also trying to see if we can get it to New York, because the Americans are very, very hard, you know, to, to get into this. Um, so what we do is we have a, a, a um, prize award, and we decided to that prize award, we don't want to see people in sneakers and jeans and coming around being, you know, shh. So we said, okay, because if you change your uh, behavior a little bit, then you will act differently. So we said, this is a black tie party. If you don't have a black tie, you have a problem getting in. So all the designers, you know, go out and rent a, a black tie so they can look nice. And, and actually it gives, you know, communication is different after this because they all have, you know, you know bow ties and, you know, and they look like they are in the wrong uh, clothes. But uh, it, it, will, it breaks down a lot of culture things uh, inside it. And it's uh, televised in Denmark. And this year we made an ag agreement with the CNN International. So from... Uh, first of August, if you go into CNN channel, they will start pumping out uh, all the finalists, there's 60 finalists, and they will be on CNN. There will be a lot of spots, there will be a lot of programs. It will all be, uh, the whole ceremony will be uh, uh, on CNN International. So this is just, uh, this is John Heskett. And John Heskett is a, was a professor in, uh, in Chicago, and then he was in um, Hong Kong for a lot of years. Now he retired. And, you know, we, we said, because John is a, he's a thinker, so we said, John, what is design? And he said, um, design is the human capacity to shape and make our environments in a ways that satisfy our needs and give meaning to our life. And we just thought this was really cool. It was not talking about shaping or anything. It was talking about the human being. It was so, you know, into the heart. So we said, well, that's our definition of design, and then it's taken over by the Danish Design Center. So this is how we define design. <clears throat> and then we have a cool guy here, you know. Uh, it's not about a Gucci bag. It's about, you know, glass of water. If you go somewhere in Africa, South America, and you say, would you like a Gucci bag or a glass of water? They'll all say, I like the water. You know, don't care about this stupid bag. Um, other quotes. <clears throat> so... So when we, when we design in the Western way, we always design for the 1%. And we haven't figured out there's a, there's a couple of billion other people. And you know, you don't need to make 10%, you can just make 1%. And if you can sell your thing in China or in India, there's that's billions of people, right? So maybe instead of designing a Gucci bag, you should design something that really changed their life or you know, give them a more positive life. And this is Kike, and you know, when that was said in 2007, you know, the whole, all the Danish uh, designers said, what are you talking about, you know, you're ruining our export. But actually what happened is with the Index Award, we in Denmark get a lot of feedback. So we can actually scan the world for design to improve life. So we can go back and say, actually for healthcare, something is happening, you know, some smart people in Asia, some smart people in America, are doing this, should we try that out? The same for, for clean tech, for all these things. So we actually scan the market, so it's a very good way of actually getting uh, new knowledge in. And also by having all the designers in Denmark, we can connect them with Danish companies, we can connect them with everybody and, you know, start to facilitate a new way of, of running things. So we have global challenges and we focus on real problems. If it's not a real problem, we don't want to do it. It has no interest. <clears throat> and it's uh, for people, planet, and profit. And that's why we're setting up now a, a, a thing where uh, we have uh, investors coming in, looking at the 60 finalists, and maybe they, and the 60 finalists have a chance to pitch for people, uh, for investors, so they can start investing in their project, so it can take off faster. And it should be scalable and efficient, and then it's a reminder of human creative capacity constantly that it's actually maybe a farmer somewhere who have this fantastic idea because he have a problem. Have you seen the new fridge that has no plug? It's not running on electricity, it comes out of India. Wait, if I was in Bosch or Hire or some of these companies, I'll really be shaking, you know. It's a stupid farmer from India who just designed a fridge with no uh, um, connection to the grid. That's really cool. 
And the, why did he design it? Because he never had electricity, so he never thought about that he should use electricity. So he just went back in his tradition and found out how can I actually, you know, take care of my fruits and my vegetables. And his grandmother told him how to do that. So just things like this. Then, then we go into the UN. This is the UN challenges um, that we're working under. So all projects, we are scrutinizing all projects through this system. So they actually have a so, so they fit into a larger uh, way of looking at the world. These are the five ones I told you about. So two million premature underweight babies are born each year, and one-fifth is dying. So that's why this design came up, infinite, warmer. It's a very, very simple design, and it has a fantastic impact. Uh, the CO2, you know, we really have a problem. We have to cut it down so fast. And, and we have to work in, a, in private and in public sector to do this. It's not, it's not done by the private sector. It's not done by the public. They have to work together. And this is why Better Place, who is an electrical car system, they went bust. And uh, everybody would say, oh, we gave a prize to a company who went bust. And I said, yes, that's really cool. Because, if, you know, first movers, they go bust. The second one, they will learn from the first one, and that's you know, called evolution, and then it will go really fast. So we actually believe that we'll have more electrical cars because they won't bust, because you can take all the people from better place, and they can learn us to do new. Needles result you know, in 260,000 HIV infections, and that's why we uh, have the, the design, which is the cap I told you about. It's very simple, just made of plastic. You bang it in, and you put your needle in, and you break it off. It is so simple. And you could say, is this design or is it a hack? I think it's design or it's a creative thing to do this. <clears throat> so how can, we, how can we get people out of shanty towns? How can we make social affordable housing? And uh, these guys are a bunch of really cool architects from, uh, from Chile. And the whole idea was one of them, or maybe two of them, went to business school, Harvard Business School, so they studied a little bit of economy. And they found out that the problem is when you actually, in uh, Chile, you, give, um, you, you get a social housing, a flat, by the government. But because you are so poor, and the government is poor, they put that out in the shanty town, so far out of the center. So when you have your house, when you send your school to kids, they go to the very bad schools, and that means that your family will stay in poverty forever. So what they came up with a genius idea that said, okay, we'll just give them half a house, half a flat, because then we can buy some land who's closer in the city center. And that means if we just have half the house, the schools are better, and you know, people who get half a house, they will really take care about it because the asset will go up. So this is, this is a house, and this is, a, this is what they built, and you get this void. You can fill that out later. So when you have money, you start filling it out. Then they'll ask if you want a shower, do you want a bathtub, you know, so just configure the half house. And now these people's, uh, the asset is going up by 200% because it's actually placed in a very nice area. The kids go to very nice schools, kids come on to university, kids actually break the walls. So this is the whole idea, just by, by changing the game plan in the financial sector, they're actually moving people up the ladder. And that means that if you go to and see these places, they are tidy. They keep them so nice because they know we have to paint them because every time I paint, I'm earning dollars, right? That's just a whole way. That's the pension. That's everything for them. Kids are educated from this. <clears throat> so how do we do with toxic fumes? So this is the Chula. It's a, it was a project done by Philips in, in Holland. They went to India and they studied um, how Indian were cooking. And you know, made a huge uh, thing about it, just looking at what was going on, and and it was called a little bit charity CSR, but it was undercover to find out when all the Indian people are lifted up, how can we sell some you know product because Philips are uh, you know selling household products, and they actually designed this one, who's uh, it's better for energy, you can cook faster, and the fume gets out. And that was just done as an open source, so everybody can just download the drawings and they can start making a production themselves. And it is quite beautiful, it's actually fantastic. We've seen someone who's, you know, decorated them in all kinds of colors. And I really like that Danes think it's, it's an ugly design. I think it's really cool. And then we have, you know, we have a lot of uh, bicycles. 
and we have people getting killed. We teach kids to wear a helmet. I never wear a helmet. I bike every day. Everybody in Denmark is biking to and from work almost in Copenhagen. Uh, even the Prime Minister. The problem with the Prime Minister is the security guards, you know, they have to be a little alert. But she's the only one who has security guards, so all the other ministers, they're just taking their push bikes. And that's also the way you get to meetings. You just take your bike because it's so smart. So it's actually, if, if you don't have a bike, you know, people will look at you and say, are, are you really, you know, living in the, in the real world? So uh, there was these two Swedish ladies, they were thinking about why isn't that, that we don't, you know, we, we get all these campaigns saying that, you know, how so many people will get killed, so many people will be brain damaged, you know, so many people will have a life in a wheelchair, why don't you use a helmet? And they said they have never heard so many excuses. I forgot it, it didn't fit, you know, I look stupid or, you know, a lot of bad excuses. And they said, you know, we haven't really unleashed it. And then someone said, uh, to be honest, it's about my hair. And they said, what? Said, you know, I do my hair in the morning, and if I put this stupid helmet on, you know, my hair is flat when I arrive at work and I look like an idiot, so I have to do my hair again. So it was all about the hair. And then they went back to 1,000 people and asked them, is this about your hair? And most of them said, to be honest, it's about my hair. So they said, okay, let's make a helmet that has nothing to do, that don't touch the hair. So the helmet, this is the helmet, the black one she has around, it's a scarf. It's made like a, um, a what do you call it, airbag. So when you actually are hit, it folds up like the white one, and it's a lot better than the normal bicycle helmets. It's now in production, it's taking them five years to do all the studies. Uh, they, they went up to Volvo, because Volvo is a very secure car, and said, can we borrow some of your people who know something about airbags? And the guys, they said, you can't do it. So they hired an unemployed uh, statistician, a mathematics guy, and they just invented them, these two girls, you know, from scratch. And to be honest, they have really nice hair, the two ladies. <clears throat> so water's a problem. This is the... The one that got the Danish one that got the first one, we were so lucky. And this is the kid book, uh, pig book, you know, that pigs goes into everything. And it, it's really fantastic when you, when you start sort of going through the book and you just find out that, you know, every second item that's around you has some kind of pig in you. And this is the glasses for the school. You can see you can get them red and white in your uh, color from your football team and everything and you can sit on them, they're really nicely designed and now it's really hip in Mexico to have these glasses and I think they cost a dollar or two, it's, it's uh, so uh, cheap. Um, this is refugee camps, we're looking at how can you actually do better refugee camps with web portals and also how can you connect uh, in anything. And this is just, uh, I just want to show you uh, some of the finalists for this year. We, we have 60, we have 1500 uh, projects then we do uh, a week where we work on the internet, all, you know, and because some is in an Asian time zone, some in the States and Europe, so we can actually constantly cutting it down to around 150, and then we met last month and we took the 150 and cut that down to 60, and that's the finalist, and then we cut it down to the five. I can't tell you uh, who will win. I'll just throw out food because we think it's uh, contaminated, it's not. So by placing them on this uh, fresh paper, you can actually have fruit for about two weeks longer. And this is a nine one, it's called Mein Café. It's by, done by a designer from the Royal School of uh, Art in London. He comes from Afghanistan, and the problem with the mines is how do you actually, uh, after the war, get rid of the mines? So he actually invented this big thing. Um, and this rolls, like, you know, if you've seen uh, these uh, Western cowboy movies, where, you know, things are just moving these uh, plants always uh, with the wind. So this one is running with the wind, with the GPS, so it's just running over the field, and when it hits a mine, uh, some of these are blown off, but it can still uh, move around. It's a fantastic design, a very beautiful as an artifact, but also very smart in a very smart world. And this one, I think, personally, this is the coolest design for, you know, the last five, ten years. This is called a Raspberry Pi. Do you know what a Raspberry Pi is? No? Oh, you have a job to do, guys. Um, this is a computer the size of a credit card. It costs 25 pounds. It's giving to kids, so kids can start programming. 
uh, we all think that we're very good at, uh, at, at doing uh, computing. But what we do is we know how to do Microsoft programs or Adobe programs. We don't know what's going on inside the box. This one will let kids start doing the inside so they can form whatever they like. So it they, they takes one and a half hour. They have to find um, a charger. They can do that from a mobile phone. And then they have to steal a keyboard. And they all have a television they can connect to. And then they just start up. And if you go to Raspberry pi.com or .org, you can see what kids can do. They send them up in balloons, they have cameras on them, they can make uh, doors go up and close, you know, funny small projects. But, and it's, it's, so kids are just getting an idea, how can I actually code my own things? Designers are using it for coding graphics. Uh, we are using it at the design center to do um, mining, scraping from uh, LinkedIn, so we can actually find all the designers by using a LinkedIn thing with the Raspberry Pi. So it's, it's very cheap, and it will, it's, it's, it's just one, it was released one year ago, and this is the best selling computer ever. It sold 1.2 million pieces under a year. And they have the Raspberry Foundation, which actually goes in and buys it and gives it to kids. Google have invested a couple of million dollars uh, to buy Raspberry Pis and give it to, to the kids and to teachers because you also have to give it to the teacher so the kids can teach the teacher what's going on because kids are a lot better to do this. They, it takes them one and a half hour then they're into Minecraft. Then they do things with Minecraft that they've never seen before and the people who invented Minecraft they really love it because they think it's so cool that now they have a couple of billion young kids who start you know working for them. So, if you have the ability to respond, you have the responsibility to do so. So, I think for designers, for design students, for the political thing, you know, I think we should really think about that the design we provide has to improve people's life. It's not about the nice chair. You can buy that when you're old and gray and sit in it. Right now, we have to design for all the big challenges we have, and we've cleared that then I think we'll have a fantastic life where we can design the most wonderful products that we will love and adore. We do form, impact, and context. So form is, of course, important. The whole design is very important. The impact, do this actually have any impact? And I must admit, I have designed a lot of products that have absolutely no impact. They're really nice, but no impact. And the last one, the context. What is the context of this? It's of course, we have a, an idea how things are done in Denmark. You have another idea because you come from another culture. So how can we actually learn from you? How can you learn from us so we can help each other to understand and also question our culture and we will question your culture. I think by actually asking the stupid questions, then you start thinking, why are we doing this? Oh, they do it in, this, in another way. Maybe we should borrow a little bit. So, watch the award show, uh, it will go, it will, live feed will come out of Index, designed to improve life, and then will be on CNN on the 29th of August. Thank you very much.